Okay, so besides being a great way to send money internationally, Wise also gives you access to bank account details in any one of these currencies. Also, depending where you're located in the world, you can even use Wise to invest in stocks and shares and deposit your money into funds that earn interest. Obviously, to access all of this, you'll first need a Wise account, which is where we'll begin in this video. To register, you'll need to visit wise.com and you can do this by clicking the link in the description box below the video. That is an affiliate link, so by using it, you'll be supporting myself and the channel. The first thing you'll need to do is click open an account and then enter your email address and click next. Unless you're a business, you'll now want to select to register for a personal account and enter the country you live in. Finally, enter your phone number followed by the six digit code that WISE will send you. After that, you just choose your password and you'll have successfully registered. Before I go any further, I absolutely recommend downloading the WISE app. It's easy to use and just makes accessing your account really quick and convenient. You can download it via the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. We'll begin by topping up as that's how we can actually use this account to spend money. On the home page, you'll just need to select the currency you wish to deposit. To deposit my local currency, all I have to do is select British Pound, then click Add and enter the amount I wish to deposit. Once I've clicked Continue, I can then choose how to pay. Topping up via Apple or Google Pay and debit or credit card is the more expensive option and bank transfer is the cheapest. Now that I have money deposited in my WISE account, I can start using this card to spend money. That also includes spending money internationally. Just because I only have British pounds deposited doesn't mean I can't use this card in another country. If I was to make a transaction abroad, WISE would just exchange my pounds at the point of sale using the current exchange rate and charge a small fee. Basically, this means that you don't have to exchange money ahead of time when traveling. You just need to make sure that you have enough money in your WISE account to cover any transactions or withdrawals. Although I always recommend exchanging currencies ahead of time, even if you don't have to. It's not only a great way to budget for a trip, but it also just makes life easier when considering how much something is going to cost you in a foreign currency. Also, if you return from a trip with excess foreign currency, you can easily exchange it back to your local one. The process of doing this is simple. You just click the balance that you wish to exchange, then click convert and enter the amount of money and select the currency you're converting to. Click continue, confirm the details are correct and click convert now. To send money, you'll need to select the send button, which is at the bottom of your screen in the middle. If you're on a desktop, this is in the top left hand corner. If you've already deposited money or topped up your account, then you'll be able to choose to send from one of your wise balances. As I have British pounds deposited, I have that option. If you don't have any money deposited, then you'll need to select money from an account outside wise. For the sake of this video, we'll select that. Here we want to choose the currency and the amount we wish to send, as well as the currency of the person we're sending money to. Now, if you click this button, you can select the transfer type and the choice you make here will impact the fee you pay. If you choose fast and easy, that'll likely be more expensive and you'll pay with a debit or credit card. Paying via bank transfer or selecting low cost transfer will mean the money arriving slightly slower, but it will also be cheaper. Unless you're in a rush, I recommend selecting this option as it's cheaper and it really doesn't make a huge difference to the transfer speed. You can also check the exchange rate you'll be receiving by clicking here. And WISE always uses the real mid-market rate. This basically means that you're getting the best possible exchange rate. If you're happy with your transfer details, then click continue. Next up, we'll need to enter our recipient's details. We can do this by clicking add a new recipient. Here you'll see three choices, so choose whichever one applies to you. I'm going to select someone else because I'm sending money to my friend in Europe. Now enter your recipient's email address and bank account details. One thing I'd like to quickly know is if this is your first time sending money with WISE, you may be asked to verify your identity. The whole verification process is really simple and WISE will just ask for a little bit more information about you. This may include your first and last name, as well as your address and date of birth. You'll also need to share some form of ID, for example, a passport. Once you've entered your recipient's bank account details, you can now double check your transfer details before clicking confirm. Here we have another chance to select how we wish to send the money. If you're sticking with bank transfer, you can either do it manually or use simple bank transfer. This option will automatically open your banking app and make transferring the money to WISE really quick and easy. But if you don't have a bank app, don't worry, you can just do a manual bank transfer. You can also still change your mind and pay via Apple or Google Pay 
debit card or even credit card. Although I don't recommend using a credit card as your provider may charge you a cash advance fee for this type of transfer. I'm going to stick with bank transfer and send the money manually from my bank account to WISE. Creating a virtual card and ordering your new physical WISE card is really straightforward. All you have to do is click the card button at the bottom of your screen. On desktop, you'll find this over on the left-hand side below home. By swiping across and clicking get a digital card, you'll be able to add a virtual WISE card to your smartphone's wallet. Now the delivery times for a WISE physical card can be as much as 21 working days, which means waiting that long before you can start spending. Not only that, but you may also have to pay to receive your physical card. In the UK, this is around seven pounds, and in Europe, six to eight euros. But with a virtual card, you don't have these issues. So I absolutely recommend getting one set up on your phone immediately. I still also recommend getting a physical card because your phone may run out of battery or you might even lose it. So it's always useful to carry one just in case. Payment requests are available on the app by clicking manage in the bottom right hand corner or on the left hand side on the desktop. If you click new, you can enter the amount of money in the currency you wish to receive. You can also add a note. This will create a link that makes it really easy for someone to send you money. You can even create a QR code that someone could scan with their phone. To get the details necessary for setting up a direct debit, you just need to go back to manage, click direct debits, and then set up a direct debit. Here you can just choose the account you want to add a direct debit for, and then share this information with a business you want to set one up with. Any active direct debits will be displayed on this page. Auto conversions can be a really useful way to pick a desired exchange rate and a specific amount you want to exchange between two currencies. Most people don't bother doing this because if you're exchanging a small amount, it probably won't be worth your while. But if you do want to set up an auto conversion, just click manage, auto conversions, then convert and select the balance you want to convert from. You can then enter the amount you wish to convert and select your desired currency by clicking this button here. Now, all you have to do is choose your desired rate. And if you're happy, just click convert. Auto conversions can also be easily canceled. Wise Assets is currently available for UK and Singaporean customers. It allows you to take money that's deposited in your Wise account and invest it in stocks or a low risk government backed fund that earns interest, kind of like a savings account. And any money you choose to invest, unlike your main Wise balance, will be FSCS protected. Now, if you go to the home section on either the Wise app or desktop, you'll see these three tabs beneath account all stocks and interest. All is the default, which indicates all of the currencies, accounts, and savings jars available in your account. If you go ahead and click on any one of these balances, you'll see the balance information section that tells you the asset type. In this case, it's set to the default setting cash. And if we click that, we can then change the balance to either interest or stocks. Let's go ahead and select interest and here we can see a detailed overview of what to expect from this fund. Right now we can earn 3.89% and it has very low risk and there are some small fees to pay. If you click continue, you'll be able to have that cash switched over to interest. In case you don't want to switch an entire balance to either stocks or interest, you can create a savings jar, deposit a specific amount of money into it and use that instead. Beneath where it says the account and under the all tab, you just have to swipe across and select the plus sign. Here you can then select jar and your chosen currency. You can add a name and an icon. Then once that's created, just select cash beneath balance information and the type of asset you want it to become. And a really great thing about Wise Assets is that if you were to invest in either stocks or interest, you would still be able to immediately access your money. Unlike a lot of investment products, there's no penalty for withdrawing and all you have to do is switch it back to cash. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for sticking around with me till the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.